unhealthy is only strong for a short period of time. And if you're trying to come back to training at 35, 40 years old, you probably ought to be putting health in front of strength and then strength will come. Mm -hmm. If you do it the opposite way, you're just setting your time clock up to go to the grave. You can get away with that shit when we were in our prime over at Louis. You know, at 22, and Louis like, ah, yeah, fuck that. You know, just take some more energy drinks and let's train harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works when you're 24. At 34, 44, yeah, that's not the right way to go. When when did your wake up call come with nutrition? You know, because we I, we all go through it, right? It's like we, you get away with it for a while, yeah. right? And then at a certain point, it's like, oh shit, mm -hmm. that's what my blood work says. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, there was two. There was two major road bumps, and they all came after Westside, obviously. Yeah, because uh, at Westside you just try to survive. But about twenty nine, thirty, thirty one was the first big like fuck moment. Um, I'm friends with Serrano. We all are, and Serrano's like, "Oh, you need to come in and do your blood work." I'm like, "Fuck that shit," you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, but anyway, I just end up going. Maybe I need to see where I'm at. You know, I was not having sleeping issues, but I was getting sinus infections every couple couple you know a couple times a year and i'm blaming it on you know what's outside and i'm not thinking you know gluten and mm -hmm. processed dairy and all this inflammation in my stomach and all the shit you know that serrano is really known for and uh, serrano looks at me at, at about it was around 32 maybe and he goes look i can keep you this big and this strong for maybe another three or four years the way you're going we can take some of this medication this and this or you can take no medication. You can listen to what the fuck I'm telling you about eating cleaner and you can be just as strong or stronger. And I can keep you like this until you're in your fifties, mm -hmm. which one you want to do. It wasn't like he was telling me this is the only way mm -hmm. I'll show you the other way too, but that's your own scenario. And I'm like, you know what? You know, I'd already broke a handful of records and I'm like, let's see how I can do this healthy. Because what I started to notice was, is that when you look unhealthy and you're strong, nobody cares mm -hmm. when you're fit and healthy and you look athletic and you got a little bit less body fat and you look like you actually do lift instead of just a national hot dog eating champion, mm -hmm. people start to go, wow, that's really interesting. So I start to notice is the diet is more tied into the aesthetic property. Now the health is important too, but you know, we run a business and look how much business helped you when you leaned out the first time mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. because now people are like, Oh shit, this guy knows about this too. And, but the health thing was huge for me because my dad died at 43. I'll be 43 in a month and a half. And uh, I, I didn't want to do that, you know, and my dad was exposed to Asian origin Vietnam mm -hmm. and had an odd cancer, but he also lived like shit. I mean, ate unhealthy, you know, he was a, just a meathead, badass trucker to just, you know, <laughs> like a bull Hurley type deal. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So for Poor. me, yeah, I mean, really you, you kick, yeah, he went to kick your ass, <laughs> even sitting down eating. And so um, long story short that, so Serrano starts telling me, Hey, look, you, you are allergic to this, this, and this, take it out. Um, so that was that was the first step. And I think that's when you saw me start to get leaner. So I went from being 312, 314 to about 295, but I started looking jacked. Mm -hmm. uh, that was way after the Think You Could Squat series where I looked mm -hmm. like a state puff yeah. marshmallow man. So this was about 2014. I start when I hit the raw stuff, I start really start realizing, okay, the diet needs to be there. This extra weight's not helping me any. Extra weight will help you in gear. Uh equipment, you know, like yeah, yeah, shirts yeah, yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah. But they don't help you raw, in my opinion. <laughs> but anyway, so 2016, I get this really weird email. Maybe it was a, maybe it was a DM on like Instagram. It was Charles Poliquin. Poliquin, I was doing a seminar in Colorado Springs, and Charles lives in Monument, which is kind of right in between Denver and Colorado. It's about 30 minutes away. He's like, "Hey, this is Charles Poliquin. I, I I live in the area that you're doing a seminar. I'd love to come and listen if you don't mind." You know, it's very respectful. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fuck, this guy wants to come listen to me talk. I had to read his shit in high school. Mm -hmm. I was reading his shit in high school and college. This dude's a fucking man, right? He shows up and he's way shorter than I thought he was. He's like five, six, if he's mm -hmm. lucky, but just a genius. And he's looking at me up and down. And first thing we start talking about was the dynamic method. And he goes, you know, I haven't used that a whole lot because he kind of came from bodybuilding. He did yeah. a lot of tempos, mm -hmm. ISO holds, which I'd never used before. So some of that stuff you'll see in the manuals. Mm -hmm. A lot of that came from Paul Quinn. <clears throat> but he was like, let me do a bio print on you. I'm like, what the fuck is that? So he's like, he gets his calipers out and does like a 14 site skin fold on me. He's like, these are where your inflammation points are. This is what you need to change your diet. Ironically, it was the same shit that Serrano was telling me mm -hmm. from a completely different scenario. So he's telling me this with blood work and he's telling me this with inflation, uh, inflammation calipers. 
So I'm going back home with all this. So Charles, take this supplement that you're deficient in magnesium, you're deficient in this. So boom, 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 boom. He gets me hooked up with ATP, mm -hmm. which, you know, gets supplements out of Canada. They're super high medical grade. I take that and within, I shit you not, four months, I had dropped probably another four and five percent body fat and put on two, three pounds of muscle on the DEXA. And I'm like, oh my God, what if I'd have known about this 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. So now I'm like 292. I got veins popping out. I'm benching 611 raw, you know, squatting the world records and shit. And that's when I started to realize full circle at about 36 that the nutrition was tying me into the strength. Mm -hmm. And if I'd have known that 10 years earlier, it would have been a completely different scenario. But I think you learn things in the time in which it was important or you need to learn them. So when I was a kid, I, I felt I felt that I mastered volume, intensity, and technical proficiency. That alone takes a lifetime. Mm -hmm. But I felt by 26, 27, you had seen me lift. Mm -hmm. I never was a technically un a not good lifter. No sound. Yeah. Everything looked great. Mm -hmm. So now what's the next thing to learn? So again, you got to start somewhere. Some people start with nutrition. Maybe that's a better way for you. Maybe that's your interest or your passion. Then it leads you into weights. Then it leads you into this. For me, I was a just a static, a static. I wanted to read and study as much as I could about technical proficiency, percentages, and reps, and what was optimal. That led me into Soviet system training, Louis mm -hmm. stuff. But then there was these big holes, like, and I was, I think my biggest, my biggest gun in my pocket that really I could use against everybody else was I was always an early sleeper. I was dead tired even when I was a kid at 830. I never liked to stay up late. When I felt, if I stayed up past 10, I felt hungover. So I always wanted to go to sleep. Maybe that was a car accident. Maybe, I don't know what that was. But the fact of the matter was, is I was always wanting to sleep eight, nine, 10 hours when I was younger, if I could. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I when I could as an older adult and had could pick my work schedule, because I know we both worked at Capital Club for quite mm -hmm. a while. I didn't work till evenings. Mm -hmm. And so I could sleep in. I could go home and take a nap. That's when I noticed that that was all full circle. Once I had my sleep down, my nutrition down, and the understanding of what worked for me on rep sets and volume, it was like having, you know, three of the biggest guns in the world to utilize. You think it's – because it's, this is kind of how I think about it for myself is – I didn't have to think about it that much because I was in a calorie surplus most of the time. Uh -huh. So my needs were being met with a surplus of Pop-Tarts and other <laughs> shit on top of it. Thus, you're all bloated. You know, so I'm recovering because I'm still fulfilling those needs. But as you get older, your body's not going to tolerate the sugar and some of the other shit as much. Yeah. Or when you want to start to get leaner, all of a sudden, you're not going to have this surplus anymore yeah. you're going to start stripping it down yeah and then when it comes down it has to become more optimal sure like training i suppose yeah, yeah. like you can do a ton of training when you're younger and get away with it right but then when you get older it's like mm -hmm. every single thing has to have a reason here mm -hmm. if it doesn't have a reason it's working against me yeah the, the energy expenditure has to match what your goal is and yeah. if that energy expenditure is not really helping that goal it's a huge deal but something to kind of hit on what you're talking about is and when you're younger, maybe those extra calories work, but maybe they're also working against you. Because if you look at, you listen to Charles or, or Serrano, you have high inflammation. You don't make good natural testosterone anyway. Mm -hmm. So now your hormones are working against you. You might be getting a calorie amount that you need, but now hormonally your body's in shambles. Because mm -hmm. sugars and trans fats and all these other processed problems are going to cause major issues underlying so even though you're getting calories, are they, what's, what's the calories coming with? Mm -hmm. And that's, if it's joint inflammation and your stomach's always pissed off, so now you're not absorbing food correctly, is it really working for you? Mm -hmm. Who knows? And the answer is, I would say it wouldn't be. So if you could figure out how to eat cleaner, er, um, but that's the hardest part. If you want to be super big, how do you do that on clean food? I ask Stan that all the time. And Stan goes, you just have to increase your frequency of cheat meals, but your, most of your meals are still clean. What do you mean? So what I would do when I was trying to stay 295 is I would have a cheat meal every 72 hours. Whatever I wanted to eat, I ate in 72 hours. But that's one meal out of 12 or 14. Mm -hmm. And then if I wanted to get leaner, I would have a cheat meal every five days. So every 90-something hours. See? Yeah. So it's the extent in which how long you go with those massive surplus eats. Instead of eating like that all the time, you get sensitive to it. So now if I eat real clean for three days and then I pop in a monster after a hard squat day or a hard bench day, now I pop in a 4,500 calorie day, as long as it's absorbable, 
my body's going to go fuck boom mm -hmm. right so you can overdo everything you can overdo training you can overdo calories you can but if you time it you know if you look at the rock like he's real good about that he eats super clean all week and then he posts these hog or cheat meals <laughs> now maybe that's just marketing yeah, but yeah, maybe yeah, it's yeah. smarts too because if it's planned in that might be making him put on some more muscle or keep it in his 50s yeah. would you put that after when it could the you said after a monster training day right yeah. so say you have a huge you know your squat for instance well that's that's a different example but something like your squat but yeah. not that squat because yeah, that's, yeah. that's a different that's gonna you're probably still recovering from that that's yeah. gonna take a long time a hard hard day yeah a normal hard with day. the cheat meal go after that yeah i i really believe that your body is sensitive like a sponge after doing that extreme level of training i think the reason you don't see as much uh data on it is because they're not studying guys like you and me mm -hmm. that have that real ability to go balls out you can't tell me that you can take a recreationally trained kid that's never benched probably 225, make him go through a strenuous workout, and he's going to have the same hormonal response to a heavy meal that you and I would. Mm -hmm. Impossible. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think you really have to look at, you know, and that's what my master's degree really opened me up to, was one of the first classes I had with Dr. Newton was, is we, would, we had lit, or, lit review class. And basically what we did is we brought in about, I'd say at least 200 papers in that semester, and we went over in a class on what was wrong with them, not what it was proving. Here's what's wrong with the sample size. Here's what's wrong with who they used. Here's what's wrong with the questionnaire. Here, and then you start to realize, like, holy shit, all this stuff is you can take with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. So really the people people should be listening to are guys that have been done, doing it for years because they somehow figured out something that worked for them. Now, maybe it won't work for you, but maybe it will. But I find when I read studies on strength training, I don't, I don't really see a lot of validation in them just because – of the sample that they're using go use somebody that's already maxed their potential now show me a five percent gain mm -hmm. don't show me somebody that's never worked out before and you said three sets of ten work because this guy's arms went from 10 inches to 10 and a half show me get go from 20 to 20 and a half yeah that's a bitch because mm -hmm. now you better have everything right because the guy to get to the 20 inches probably already has those variables figured out when you were leaving Serrano's office, and I'm intrigued by this because I had the same conversation with him. Like, what, what were you thinking when you were driving back or after he, after he called you and yelled at you because it was all fucked up? Because he's going to say, you know, he's telling you your markers, right? And some of them you're like, oh, fuck, no, okay, it's not good. What's going through your mind at that time? It was like a gut check. I mean, you know, I, and this is hard to explain, but I, it, for me it makes sense because people are like, what is he talking about? When I graduated high school, I weighed 250, and I was already pretty, pretty big kid for you know 250. So people are like, oh, he's a genetic freak. It took me six years to weigh 280, with anything I wanted to eat under mm -hmm. the sun. I was maxed, mm -hmm. and then it took me another four years to weigh 300. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, well, he's already big, dude. You don't realize it took me that long to weigh that. Drugs or not, mm -hmm. that's how long it took me to weigh that. And it was one of those things where you're just like, holy shit, you know, like this. This I'm a hard gainer. Mm -hmm. everybody's a hard gainer once they get to a genetic limit at a certain point 100 percent. yeah yeah if you weigh 140 and you're not supposed to weigh 165 it's going to be a bitch to weigh 165 mm -hmm. if you're like me and graduate high school at 250 mm -hmm. it might take you six or eight years to weigh 300 to do it to do it semi right so now i'm just walking home and i've i put so much energy and time and and thought into reps and sets and technical and now I've realized that I've just opened up another Pandora's box and I don't know shit. Mm -hmm. And now I got to study all this. Yeah, I had advanced master's nutrition mm -hmm. classes, but you and I both know that don't teach you what Serrano and Poliquin know. No. It's completely off the chart. So it's almost like I think the average person might get into that that's not a, a studier or a person that's passionate about every little aspect of what they want to do. They could look at that as monotonous and go, I, I just can't handle this much information. I'm fucking done. I'm just going to stick with what I do. For me, it's like, okay, let's, 5% at a time, 5% at a time. In five years, that's, you know, that's 60%, 80% change mm -hmm. because I've fixed all these little areas and now I feel so much better and now I haven't lost any strength, which is exactly what Serrano was telling me. You don't need these shit calories. You need the right amount and you need from the right things. And once I figured that out, my body was, instead of firing, trying to stress seven cylinders, I'm on eight now, mm -hmm. you know?